I'm Daniel Charney, and this is Amy Vicknell. We're part of Fourth. We're uh, learn create may, mainly focused on creative learning, but we're known uh, for a project called Sixperts that has been around for about ten years. And we're part of this EU research into different ways of bringing open schooling to life. Um, so this is the first of a series of meetings to introduce this project, Make It Open, and um, how to engage with schools or for school to engage more with communities. This project is part of a bigger group of partners that are doing the same in 10 other countries. But we were one of the core partners, so we were uh, developing also the pilot projects, which you'll see in a minute, and some of the information packs. The other partners are uh, science museums or organizations that support science teaching and learning. And um, we've worked directly with schools and teachers. Our, our research is really focused on how teachers work and how to support them. Other research into open schooling uh, under the EU Commission is uh, looking at other aspects in terms of content or the school agenda or the community. We're really focused on uh, the teachers and the groups, the, the countries that were involved in devising the uh, pilots are also running the hubs parallel to other countries that have joined. And they're all using the same tools that will be available here. In terms of the project and involvement during the next school year, it's pretty it's pretty easy to join whenever it suits you. There's not a given time. And the size of the project is also up to the school's interest and what it can do for what open schooling can do or you want it to do for you. We're going to introduce this after this presentation. You're very welcome to say, yes, I'd like to be involved. It's only an email, and then we'll send an invitation email um, and develop support the development of your version uh, of the open schooling. And then we're there also, we're here or there, wherever that means online, to um, connect, support, help, reach experts, help reach or connect with other uh, schools or... In terms of open schooling, we thought it would be good to start with the definition because I think, I don't know how many people use the term. It's got quite a, a lot of uh, interpretations. We looked into uh, the way it's been described and defined by open school for open societies and other research, but for us, in the consortium, we felt that the key was really that, yes, it's about, it is about collaborations, but they, it's, it's important that these are purposeful collaborations, that they're not a one-off and they are be moving from happy accidents to a culture of collaboration, being part of the community and the community being part of the school. And underlying all this is how the students uh, get to learn through real world projects and think about the world and their um, agency to do something. Um, so in order to understand open schooling a bit more in terms of what we're talking about, these four um, elements are discussed in Open School for Open Societies. If you want to see more of this research, the link is below there, but we thought this is, of all the things out there, this one we felt was helpful for us to understand. So it's part of the information pack now. It's where it's happening, what it's about, the fact that it's uh, really about doing things that are engaging and encouraging uh, people to be involved in things that matter to them, and very much a important aspect is where this thing, where the learning happens in the classroom but, uh, and outside and where outside and how can you devise uh, as much of that as possible away from the desk, away from the classroom, away from the building, in the neighborhood, online, uh, kind of expanding the understanding of where learning happens. And in terms of open schooling, we've often heard about the 
we've open we've often heard about how it might help schools but we really wanted to um, be clear about what it could do uh, for students and for teachers what we saw as uh, important is to understand what what can you work with when you're designing or planning and devising uh, uh, open schooling program so we call them the building blocks and these are the things to think about and uh, work with as you're working on the program one of them can be the starting point in terms of the idea uh, but each one of these, I'm not going to go into them in detail, they're in the information packs, but they kind of break it down so you can think about uh, the things that you probably think about anyway uh, as a teacher. But when you're thinking about open schooling, you might give more attention to who, is that, who, who are they learning with or where it's happening and not kind of go for the... Um, usual suspects of you know and think about when it's happening and also um maybe even think about the formats from outside that you can use like competitions or so these building blocks are kind of a first way of uh thinking about the tools but we also thought it could be helpful to understand what we're talking about in terms of the roadmap of the project and of course teachers already are very uh, fluent and uh, and used to delivering and, and in fact all these things but when you think about open schooling you might uh, have to think a bit more about the the kind of making the case to the senior management or to the parents and what what is it doing for the school for the community so being a bit more able to articulate the the reasons to do it the motivations then developing the vision and then in terms of planning and creating partnerships so maybe there's a slightly more weight on that side than usual um, but most of these things are happening anyway it's just seeing them as part of a continuum helps to decide where you want to um, put some more time into and uh really important for us to say that although i'm going to show you how we collected uh, 16 learning scenarios that were developed in, as pilots and turned into uh, material with lesson units and but they are all materials and resources to adapt to the timetables that you have in your schools and so we're going to be using the term learning scenario but that equates to a lesson plan or a learning unit and equates to an activity, depending on your own culture and the school's culture. Because we were working across different countries, we kind of reached some term that everyone agrees to use. But uh, when you're planning, you obviously be thinking which subject is it coming from, which hours are available. Maybe it's cross two subjects, as we've seen, uh, very interesting combination in a learning scenario around sound, which was called the sound, uh, sounds around us that ends up with the design and making of a little sound studio. They also involved the music teacher in, uh, this was in, in Derby High School. They, they developed it and we supported them. So it actually enabled them to take different hours uh, and break the students up in a more cross-disciplinary approach, which is another aspect which is great in, in open schooling. So in terms of our project and support, we are, um, the whole research project is saying that the minimum is four learning units and that can happen in a day. So one of the existing learning scenarios or a combination between them or something that you are generating yourself, uh, but using this tool uh, so that's the minimum uh, and then it can be a larger involvement across half a term or a stem week more learning units um, and it can of course be a full term um, now the examples we have range from six to 12 learning units but you'll see it's very easy to uh, take away one or add or uh, the whole point is that it works for you and um, so we kind of going along the the first stage we uh, ran pilot projects uh, in the uk and um, poland in israel and in holland and each of these resulted in four learning scenarios and so we've got 16 
those pilot programs are available now uh, as part of and inside a tool called the Navigator. I'll go through that in a minute. And then also there are information packs. And in fact, you can take the information packs and do a project even without the Navigator. The Navigator helps consider all those building blocks that we talked about. And then there are a number of additional um, training and tools and opportunities that I'll share that can be part of um, any school's involvement. And one of the things we found out is that case studies help get an idea of uh, what open schooling can be for us uh, in some other place. This is one of the case studies in the information packs. It's a project that took part in a playground in Israel. And the children developed uh, explanations and demonstrations of the physics happening on each of the activities. So what happens on the slide or a swing? And then these children, uh, which were in a secondary school, uh, also hosted a primary school and they became the people creating the learning for uh, experience with the kids, younger children. And also because it was open in the community, it was kind of porous and people started using and relating to it also not in a less structured way. So it was there. So that's in a community taking an existing place and creating a, in effect a, a, another layer within it. Um, a really nice example of open schooling. That's one of the lessons as well in, in the pack. In the, in the navigator, sorry. Uh, the information pack is something that can be downloaded already from our uh, website. And so in effect is a way of starting to think about the project or immediately or even doing it. There are three information pack. One is about what open schooling is. The other is uh, case studies. And the third is more practical tools. Um, this is what they look like. And we've, uh, yeah, it took quite a while to pare them down and translate them. And they're now in 10 languages. Um, we didn't have to translate, so we had a bit more time to enjoy uh, working on them. Uh, but we're very keen to hear feedback when they're in use to understand if they're good, if they do the job. The next uh, information pack is really the case studies and highlights from each. And in the pilots, we also talk about kind of uh, wow moments, aha moments, kind of moments that are highlights, but also things to uh, consider. So the uh, moments that or things that need more attention in advance. Uh, the last one is really um, more about the tools, including understanding the journey or thinking about the journey, how to move from one stage to the other. And it includes very practical things like a letter template to uh, connect to an organization. We know everyone can write them, but they also take time. So can that be made easier? Um, letter template to parents. And we've heard a lot of the, about the need to discuss uh, and reach parents in different ways, discuss with parents uh, what they could do, but um, what are the tools for that? So we're going to do a session later, um, I think at the beginning of next year around how to work and involve parents in open schooling. But if there is a subject that comes up that interests you about open schooling that we can uh, create a session around, that's also an option. The Navigator is the online tool, which um, is a resource, but also a planning tool. And in it are uh, the lesson scenarios broken down into lesson units and really even then detailed lesson units. So they can be taken as such. And some, in some countries, they did run what they uh, saw in the lesson plan and others adapted and some people use it really as a scaffolding. The lesson scenarios are the, the ones that we have at the moment are um, oriented towards kind of uh, climate education, but not only. There are other aspects to it. Um, you know, the, there is a kind of strong nature and climate, but um, 
there is aspects of well-being and health and also um, physics um, takes a, quite a strong, it somehow came up in all of them quite uh, as a main interest for teachers. When you open a lesson scenario, you will see the units, they're described at top level, and then you can go in to see them in a kind of running order, which is something that can be moved around, re redesigned, uh, edited, taken out or split for different, uh, um, for instance, if you're introducing a cross-disciplinary situation where a music teacher or a drama teacher or a maths teacher is involved and they want to do something at a different time, it can be put into the plan. And then I guess the point is that once you're building something, you will want to share it. So you'll be able to save the version. There's an area called um, build your own, and then you can return to that learning scenario to keep working on it or to download and share it with a colleague. Ultimately, it will be amazing if the final ones are being brought back into the consortium and shared back internationally even. We took the lesson scenarios and put them into five themes. Uh, we thought they would be, from what we heard, would be of more interest here in the UK. Um, and so if any of you have themes that you're more focused on or interested in, we could suggest which lesson scenarios to, to start to look at. Um, one of the projects that was developed in the UK was the Zero Waste School in Derby High School. And so there is also an option of maybe hearing from them at some point about how they did it. And one of the other projects that was uh, fun in terms of children's feedback uh, they enjoyed was the healthy snack one where they're actually looking critically at what they consume, how it's marketed, what, the, what is in it, and then designing. Now that could be done in a day as a short kind of pared down activity, or it could be done across a whole term, including the garden and planting, and looking, waiting for ingredients that you will use and so on. So each of these, is a scaffolding for uh, compressing or stretching. In terms of our plan, uh, we want to share these tools and here if anyone's interested, once you say yes, we would like to be involved, we'll send you a kind of uh, email with um, a registration into the project. The research aspect is quite light. Uh, there are not many, uh, I guess, uh, Amy, that maybe you can mention a bit about the level of uh, involvement in terms of evaluation and feedback? Yeah, of course. And um, so at the beginning of the project, each school would do quite a short questionnaire, kind of gauging the level of um, experience in open schooling or perception of open schooling beforehand. And then that same teacher would do another survey at the end so that those results could be compared. And um, that's kind of the real basic level but um, there's also a bit of an opportunity if the schools did want to engage with more evaluation and getting kind of the students um, feedback and their experiences, then we've got some research champions as well. So a couple of schools, if they're interested in um, mm -hmm. kind of delving a little bit deeper, then we'd love to find yeah. out more really. So during the pilot, it was a much deeper involvement in terms of feedback and evaluation uh, this stage is much lighter but it is about learning back to improve the tools as well in terms of additional opportunities there is a training offer there's a free certified training um, focused on open schooling that was is being developed from these materials and these pilots and it's going to be running i think in january um, and that will be available for free for anyone uh, that it takes part in the project. I think the registration is in, now they've set it to late December. They might bring it uh, earlier if they, if they can. Um, there's a competition which uh, schools taking part will be eligible to join, and it's a STEM for all theme this year. 
and the link we share on uh, is shared on our website and you can have a look if this is something that you'd like to do and in that sense you then write the lesson scenario according to how you're going to run the competition uh, so it's not from the lesson scenarios it's your own uh, that you're developing and finally we are looking for uh, anyone any schools a number of schools that are able to and interested to be a bit more involved in sharing insights and information uh, we do have some bursaries for this level of involvement and it will also include connecting with the international team um, so that's another opportunity um, that's coming the website that we're going to share with you or maybe some of you already had a look will have all this information but we've also started adding short films about how to open school taking um kind of the journey from the beginning to the end but these are really short films so we hope they'll be useful and all the other information is on this page which will uh Amy will share a link with you now in the chat. So that's it. That's the project structure. Um, I guess, is there anything that you'd like to hear more about from what I've mentioned so far? Um, there's one thing I would like to ask, but I can wait. If there are any questions um, or you want me to go back to anything, please let me know. Um, and until then, I guess I, from our perspective, it would, would be interesting to understand um, what themes um, kind of uh, raise uh, are more of, are of more interest for you. Um, I, in that sense, if uh, there's um, no particular uh, theme that you want to discuss, our first one that we're going to focus on will be um, around these three lesson scenarios and we'll go into them in more detail. That's in uh, a few weeks in October, 12th of October. We'll be looking at these three lesson scenarios and the units within them and uh, talking a bit more about how they ran and uh, maybe if anyone's interested to use any of them, we are available for, for uh, after, after each session for another half hour to discuss particular uh, interests or if someone wants to start discussing the project, we'll be available after each one of these uh, events.